So on today's episode, I'm going to be asking the question, can this commander be broken? This unexpected commander sees almost no play. I mean, I think the last time I checked EDH rec, it was around like 200 or so decks at the most. And yeah, like ranked near a thousand. So this commander, again, if you take to a table, players just might not think about at all. And then all of a sudden, well, you can do some really crazy things. So with that said, let's jump into it. And that unexpected commander would be Garna the Blood Flame. She is a 3-3 human warrior with flash that costs 3 black red and has. When she enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. And on top of that, other creatures you control have haste. So again, Garna basically sees no play as a commander, though her ETB, when used in, well, some pretty interesting ways, can be incredibly impactful, if not broken. And on top of that, I mean, giving a creature's haste is quite nice. Now, the way that Garna might play out in a lot of decks out there might just be, okay, a board wipe happens. All right, I shall save my team, essentially get them back to my hand. Uh, yeah, cool. That That's what happens. I mean, for five mana at flash speed, that's quite a lot to be holding up. So yeah, there is a reason why Garna really doesn't see all that much play with those kinds of builds. That being said, and what I'm here to tell you is that with the way that I'm building around Garna, things are going to be a bit crazier than that. Now, before we jump into the actual build, of course, I do want to mention that every single card in this deck, including the commander, is actually less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly deck. On top of that, as we are going through the cards in this episode, I'm going to be breaking things down into different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. And of course, if you are interested in this deck and surprising your friends with this commander, well, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. And now with all that said, let's jump into the cards. First up, our ramp package is going to be, well, let's just say interesting with this deck. And let's start with cards like Goldhound, Basalt Thrall, and Overeager Apprentice. Goldhound is a 1-1 with her Strike and Menace that we can tap and sacrifice to add one mana of any color. So we can get this down very early and utilize it for mana when we need to. But most importantly, when we are utilizing it for mana, again, the amount of mana that this gives us is actually the amount of mana that this costs. So keep that in mind that essentially this can end up paying for itself if again with our commander we are able to get it back into our hand. And keep in mind with our commander granting haste, that can really come to play with these as well. Speaking of which, there's Basalt Thrall, which can tap to sacrifice itself to add black black to our mana pool. And with this costing black black, again, we get the amount of mana that we put into this back. And then Overeager Apprentice costs two and a black, and it says this card a card, sacrifice it, add black 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 to your mana pool. Now, keep in mind that, again, our commander does say return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn, anywhere being the key word. So we actually get this back from our graveyard, obviously, when we sacrifice it. And also, if we discard a creature card to this and we cast Garna, we can get that back as well. Moving on, we've got Salt Davy Adnate, which has tap sacrifice a black artifact creature, add an amount of black to the sacrifice creature's mana value. So this actually has the potential of adding even more mana back than we put into it. Now, keep in mind one tricky thing that many players might not realize about Garna, and one thing that can make it broken, is that Garna's ETB can actually get itself back. And we'll talk about some other sacrifice outlets here in a bit, but yeah, if we actually have Garna coming into play, the ETB goes on the stack, we can sacrifice Garna before the ETB actually resolves, then the ETB resolves, and you know what? Garna's ETB brought it herself back to our hand. So just keep that in mind, but for the time being, let's go through our other ways to ramp. Elena Kessig Trapper is a fantastic one, a 4-3 with first strike that has tap and amount of red equal to the greatest power among creatures you control that enter the battlefield this turn. So again, a hasty Elena, if it's coming into play, can obviously, you know, tap for four. I mean, in Garna itself, you know, has three power too. So yeah, we've got ways to actually get a good amount of value out of this. Speaking of which, George Familiar makes historic spells we cast cost one less to cast, which counts artifacts and legendaries. So our commander costs one less to cast and, well, all of our legendaries too. And of course, on top of that, artifacts 
All of these can be incredibly impactful and can really help us go off. So we're also going to be running some other cost reducers as well with Thunderscape Familiar, Nightscape Familiar, and Hazret's Monument. Thunderscape Familiar says black spells and green spells you play cost one less to play. So again, obviously we're not having any green in this deck, but yeah, black spells costing one less can really be impactful. On the other hand, we've got Nightscape Familiar, which says blue spells and red spells you cast cost one less to cast. So yeah, again, are red spells costing less? That is huge. Speaking of which, we've also got Hazaret's Monument, which helps out in multiple ways. Red creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's incredible. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. So this can help us loot while we're casting creature spells. And yeah, our goal with this deck is going to be to cast a ton of them over and over and over again. So we can loot a lot. And keep in mind, again, if we are discarding creature spells with this, we actually can get them back with Garna. But yeah, cost reduction for our key pieces, especially for our commander, can be massive. On top of cost reduction, though, we've got other ways to provide a lot of value with cards like Runaway Steamkin, Scepter of Skulls, and Mahati Emporium Master. Runaway Steamkin is a 1 1 that says whenever you cast a red spell, if it has fewer than three counters on it, put a plus one counter on Runaway Steamkin. And by removing three counters from it, we add red, red, red. So basically, when we get things going, all of our red spells are going to be giving us an extra red mana when we cast them. And speaking of extra free mana, there's Zipter of Skulls, which says when another non toned creature you control dies, put a 1 1 colorless Eldrazi sign creature token on the battlefield, and yeah, sacrifice this creature, add colors to your mana pool. Again, the goal of this deck is to have an absurd amount of non toned creatures die, so um, yeah, we're going to have that happen quite often. And whenever we have those creatures die, we get free mana for doing so. One card that can really help set ourselves up, though, in a massive way is Mahadi Emporium Master. It says at the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. So even if we're not completely set up, this can be a great way to just get a ton of treasures in a single turn to set ourselves up to probably win on the next turn. But of course, we've got a lot of other valuable cards that can help us out and get ourselves up to do so. First up, how about a very simple creature with Blood Pet? It's a creature that just costs a single black mana, and by sacrificing it, you get a single black mana. So again, if we sacrifice this, we can get it back with our commander, and then we can actually use the mana that we sacrificed it for to recast itself. Which, of course, is exactly what we're looking for with creatures with this kind of a deck. So we've also got Skirk Prospector, which can help us out in actually an even bigger way. Sacrifice a goblin, add red. Of course, Skirk Prospector is a goblin itself, so like Blood Pet, we can sacrifice it for mana, but we can also sacrifice other goblins that we have in the deck as well for mana too. Stepping things up, we've got Reckless Barbarian, which we can sacrifice for red, red, and again, this one costs one to red, so obviously we can, you know, have it pay for itself, but of course, on top of that, if we've got a cost reducer in play, again, like that Nightscape Familiar, we can actually net mana by sacrificing this and recasting it. Next up, we've got some creatures that actually want to be sacrificed as well with cards like Impulsive Pilferer, Shambling Ghast, and Mere Moon Vessel. When Impulsive Pilferer dies, we get a treasure token. Shambling Ghast gives us an option. We can either give Tar Creature and Evoke Controls minus one, minus one until our turn, but the best mode of the time, we're going to get a treasure token. And then Mere Moon Vessel says, when it's been your grave from play, add colors to your mana pool. So obviously, each of these can you know, pay for themselves essentially. Now they can't sacrifice themselves to get there, but we've got plenty of other fantastic ways to sacrifice them for even more value. Next up, in a similar way, we've got Cathedral. Thodian, which costs three mana, and when it dies, we get Colos, 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 or, you know, three mana. And on the other end of things, we've got Priest of Gix and Priest of Urbrask, each of which have an ETB. When Gix enters the battlefield, we add Black, Black, Black to our mana pool, and when Urbrask enters the battlefield, we add Red, Red, Red to our mana pool. So again, we essentially get the mana back that we put into them, and uh, like I mentioned before, you know, if we've got ways to reduce their cost, even better. But speaking of cost... We actually have some creatures as well that can cost us nothing with Rograk, Ornithopter, and Endless One. Rograk is a simple 0-1 with First Strike, Menace, and Trample, but it costs zero mana. So again, if we can get this in play and, you know, sacrifice it for value, we can get it back with our commander and do it again. And again, and again, once we're set up properly. In a similar way, there's Ornithopter, a 0-2 flyer for zero. So yeah, again, a creature that costs us zero is very similar to one that, you know, could be sacrificed essentially for its cost as well, at least for this deck's purposes. Next up, though, there's Endless One, which costs X, so we can put any amount of mana into that X, or, you know, we can just put no mana into it, and then it enters the battlefield with zero counters on it, and it's a zero-zero, and it goes away. 
Which again can be great because yeah, I mean, we're just getting it in play and basically just sacrificing it for free. So yeah, we can just essentially keep getting this back again and again and again with our commander. In a similar way, we've also got Stone Coil Serpent, Ugin's Conduit and Shifting Wall, each of which again are X mana creatures that would come and play with counters on them. But yeah, we, we don't really want them to have counters. So we're just going to have them, you know, go away. And of course we still get whatever other benefits we have from other death triggers. And we'll talk about those here in a bit. But yeah, these can be incredibly impactful. So we're also going to be running Cryptic Trilobite, which costs XX, but again, we can just spend, you know, zero mana, and it just, you know, comes into play and then goes away. Next up, though, we've got some creatures that can be free in a fantastic way with some Legats with Chiron Legat and Deep Blue Legat. Chiron Legat is a 1-1 Goblin, and if an opponent controls a Plains and we control a Mountain, we can play it for free. And then Deep Blue Legat is somewhat similar. It says if an opponent controls a Forest and you control a Swamp, you may play without paying its mana cost. In Commander, chances are pretty likely our opponents are going to have those basic land types in play. So yeah, essentially these can just be free creatures for us as well. But there's one card out there that can take even more advantage of creatures, especially ones that are free like these. And that would be the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is... Thermopod, which is a 4-3 slug that costs 4 into red, and it has pay Snowland, which, you know, okay, this part doesn't really matter, but here we go. It gains haste until end of turn, but it also has, more importantly, sacrifice a creature at red to your mana pool. So this is a free sacrifice outlet that actually generates us mana. So just picture again like an Ornithopter. We can play that for free, and then we can actually sacrifice it with this for mana, and we can actually get our commander out again to get Ornithopter back, which we can then, you know, again, play for free, sacrifice for mana, and you see where this is going. On top of, again, like I mentioned, sacrificing our commander before its own ETB goes off so that we can get our commander back too. This card can be absolutely incredible. Again, sacrifice outlets are key in this deck to ensure that we can get creatures to actually hit our graveyard to get back with our commander so we can recast them again and again and again. And yeah, this one provides us mana. It is a value engine for us that generates mana so we can keep things going. I mean, again, just think about the potential with this. And again, those creatures that have death triggers that, you know, give us mana, you know, like a Cathodian. Cathodian needs to be sacrificed to get that value out of it, that three mana. And again, on top of that, we get an extra mana for doing that thanks to this. So yeah, Thermopod is, in my opinion, an absolutely incredible card in this deck and definitely worthy of the title of the Golden Pig. But of course, we also are running some other fantastic sacrifice outlets with cards like Viserysir, Woe Strider, and Carrion Feeder. Viserys here has Sacrifice a Creature, Scry 1, so again, a fantastic free Sacrifice out that can provide a lot of card selection throughout the game. And then Woe Strider has Ventures Battlefield, create a 0-1 Goat Creature token, and Sacrifice another Creature, Scry 1. Next up, though, there's Carrion Feeder, which can't block, but it has Sacrifice a Creature, but a plus one counter on it. Regardless, each of these free sacrifice outlets are great because, again, we have some creatures that really need to be sacrificed, including our commander. And being able to do so at any time and for free is huge. So next up, we also have some sacrifice outlets that can be really hard to deal with, and let's start with Demir Houseguard. It has sacrifice a creature regenerate it, and we can also transmute if we want to go get a card from our deck that has a converted mana cost of 4. So this can be helpful in a lot of situations, but again, yeah, it's just a free sacrifice outlet that can be hard to deal with. This is great to just keep around. Speaking of which, there's Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, a 4-1 with flying and haste, so we can sacrifice it and it gains indestructible until end of turn, and if the sacrifice creature was human, we get a counter on it. In a somewhat similar way, there's Immer Sturm Predator, a 3-3 flyer, and when it becomes tapped, eggs up to one target card from a graveyard and put a plus one counter on Immer Sturm Predator. And by sacrificing a creature, it gains indestructible until end of turn, tap it. So yeah, these outlets can be quite potent and hard to deal with. Next up, some cards that can actually help us out in different ways, you know, kind of like Sacrifice Outlets too in a way even, are cards like Deathbringer, Thokdar, Judith the Scourge Diva, and War Storm Surge. Deathbringer Thokdar is a 3-3 that has, whenever the creature dies, you may put a plus one counter on Deathbringer Thokdar. And by removing a counter from it, it deals one damage to our creature or player. So in a very strange way, we can actually build up counters on this to take those counters off and take out our own creatures. Because again, if we take out our creatures, we can get them back with our commander and yeah, we can just keep this going. But of course, this can also be a win condition for us as well, you know, as we're storming off, you know, sacrificing creatures, getting them back again and again and again and again, we get a ton of counters on this and ping down our opponents and their things. Next up, there's Judith the Scourge Diva, which gives other creatures we control plus one plus zero, and more importantly, whenever a non-tone creature you control dies, it deals one damage to any target. 
So again, this can take out our own things or our opponents as well. One incredible card in this deck that was War Storm Surge. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, deals damage equal to its power to any target. So again, we can actually utilize our creatures to take themselves out, or we can utilize them to take out our opponents or their things. So whether our creatures are, you know, coming into play or leaving play, we can dish out damage in a wide variety of ways. We can also put a hurting though on our opponents with Phyrexian Plague Lord. It has tap sacrifice Phyrexian Plague Lord. Tar creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. And by sacrificing a creature, we get tar creature minus one, minus one until end of turn. So again, we can actually take out our own creatures with this by sacrificing our own creatures, or we can take out our opponent's creatures as well. Keep in mind too, with that tap activated ability, again, our commander does give haste. So yeah, that can be very impactful taking out bigger creatures. Next up though, there's Scourge Familiar, which is an incredible card in this deck. Kind of like, not a reverse Thermopod, but kind of like a Thermopod in a different way. Discard a card, add black. Again, keep in mind, Garna does bring back every creature that was put in our graveyard from anywhere, which includes our hand. So we can utilize this to just kind of skip some steps of the process if we really want to, to start generating a lot of value by just, you know, discarding a ton of cards, getting a lot of mana, casting our commander, and, you know, rinsing and repeating. Or this can actually just give us the mana that we need in certain situations to put us over the edge and win. Because yeah, keep in mind that we definitely want to get a lot of creatures out and sacrificed for value because of cards like, you know, Grim Harvest Specs, Midnight Reaper, and Harvester of Souls. Grim Harvest Specs says, whenever another non-tone creature you control dies, draw a card. Again, we are going to be getting creatures in play and sacrificing them a ton, so this can help us dig through our deck in absolutely no time. Next up, Midnight Reaper is somewhat similar. Whenever a non-tone creature control dies, Midnight Reaper deals one damage to you and you draw a card. And yeah, one life for one card is well worth it, especially in Commander. But in an even bigger way, we've got Harvester of Souls. Whenever another non-tone creature dies, you may draw a card. So yeah, this counts our opponent's creatures as well. Next up, one that only counts our own, but actually counts all of our creatures, is Smothering Abomination. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature, which again is not a bad thing for this deck at all, and whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. So this one will also count any tokens we sacrifice too. Next up, there's Doomweaver, which has Soul Bond, and as long as it's paired with another creature, each of those creatures has, when this creature dies, draw cards equal to its power. So even if we just keep pairing this with Garna, again, keep in mind that when we sacrifice Garna, you know, before its own trigger goes off, we are going to be drawing three cards every single time. But perhaps the biggest way to draw a ton of cards at once in this deck is with Liliana's Standard Bearer. It has Flash and Winter's Battlefield draw X cards for X the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Again, we are going to be cycling through creatures, just having them come into play and die, go back in our hand, come into play and die, go back in our hand, come into play and die. So yeah, our creature death count is going to be incredibly high. Next up, we've also got some other cards that can help us out with Gate to the Afterlife, Shadows of the Past, and Sunberg's Invocation. Gate to the Afterlife says whenever a non-token creature control dies, you gain one life and you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. This can help us loot a ton throughout the game. And again, like I mentioned before, keep in mind that for discarding creature cards with this, our commander can help us get those back. And then Shadows of the Past can also give us some great card selection. Whenever a creature dies, scry one. And keep in mind, like, you know, Harvester of Souls, this also counts our opponent's creatures. Next up, though, a card that helps out in a very different way is Sunberg's Invocation. It says, whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library, you X that spell's mana value, you may cast a spell with mana value X less from one card's ability display without paying its mana cost, but the rest of the library in a random order. Again, we're going to be casting and recasting creatures again and again and again, including our commander, so this can get us a ton of value off the top of our library. And again, keep in mind if we hit something that you know can be sacrificed for mana, that's even more value. <laughs> Next up, some other benefits from sacrificing, though, come with cards like Annex Heart in the Forge, Blight Mount, and Open the Graves. Whenever Annex or another non toad creature we control dies, we get a 1-1 Seder creature token with this creature can't block, and if this creature had power 4 or greater, we get two of those tokens instead. So again, just think of the possibilities with this in something like Thermopod in play, making a ton of tokens that then can give us a ton of value. So we're also be running Blight Mound, which says attacking pests you control get plus one with zero and have menace. And whenever a non-tone creature control dies, create a one one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. Again, essentially with any of these, we can make a massive army in absolutely no time that can actually generate us even more value. 
So we're also going to be running open the graves. So whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. Next up, we've also got lightning coils, which can actually be a fantastic win condition in any way. Whenever a non-token creature you control is put in a grave from play, put a charge counter on lightning coils. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if lightning coils has five more charge counters on it, remove all of them and then put that many 3 1 realm into creature tokens with haste into play. A ton of essentially lightning bolts swinging away at our opponents. Yeah, that's going to be fun. And speaking of fun, there's Ogre Slumlord. Whenever another non tone creature dies, you may create a 1 1 black rat creature token and rats you control have death touch. This counts our opponent's creatures as well, but yeah, we're going to have a ton of rats. And again, when this is in play, death touching rats, that can be great. Next up, a very simple spell, though, that can help us out in a big way is Rise of the Dread Marn. It's going to give us X 2 2 black zombie berserker creature tokens, rex the number of non tone creatures that died this turn, and we can foretell for just a single black mana. So this can be huge, you know, again, as we're creatures storming off and we're having creatures die left and right, we can get a ton of tokens out of nowhere with this. And speaking of storm, well, we're also going to be running Empty the Warrens, which is a fantastic storm card. Create two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens, and it's got storm whenever you cast a spell copied for each spell cast before it this turn. So a ton of goblins, and again, with, I should probably mention this earlier, with all of these token creators, you know, Again, with our commander, our commander gives our creatures hey, so we can swing out if we need to. But we can also take out our opponents and their other things with another storm card with Grape Shot. This is going to deal 1 damage to any target, and of course, it has Storm. Next up, there's Speed the Swarm, which can destroy a creature and enchantment opponent controls, and we lose life, we let opponents mana value. And then we've got Butcher of Malak here, which can decimate our opponent's boards in absolutely no time. It says, whenever it and other creature control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So yeah, with the vast amount of creatures we're going to be sacrificing again and again and again, our opponents are going to have absolutely no boards. But of course, we can also take our opponents out and put them out of their misery with cards like Zulpur Cutthroat and Witty Roastmaster. Zulpur Cutthroat has, whenever it and other creature control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And then Witty Roastmaster is on the other end of things. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, Witty Roastmaster deals one damage to each opponent. So whether we're sacrificing our creatures or, you know, getting them into play again and again and again, we can take our opponents out incredibly quickly with these. Now, we don't even have to go infinite to, you know, take our opponents out with these. But yeah, I mean, we definitely can. And even if we're not going infinite, well, with that cost reduction and with all the other things, we can get enough value, enough creatures coming into play and leaving that we can take our opponents all out at once incredibly quickly. Yeah, this deck can be an unexpected powerhouse at the table. But now that we've talked about every single non-land card in this deck, let's talk about the lands. First up, we've got Command Tower, which can tap for any of our colors, Exotic Orch, which can tap for any of them most of the time, and Ash Bears, which can basically land cycle away. And then we've got some lands that can be sacrificed to go get either of our basics, and actually with the River Tears Overlook and Maestro's Theater, we gain one life when we do so. Moving on, we've got Mirror Landscape, which actually helps ramp us, Tainted Peak, which can tap for either of our colors if we've got a Swamp, and Shadow Blood Ridge, which can, you know, essentially be filtered to tap for our colors. Next up, we've got Foreboding Roads and Smoldering Marsh, which can tap for either of our colors, and each of which has the potential to come into play untapped. And finally, of course, we're going to round this deck out with basics, with mountains and swamps. And now that we've talked about every single card in this deck, let's talk about the price. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, every single card in this deck is less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly deck with an estimated cost of just $31.54. And keep in mind that estimated cost does actually include basic lands at $0.10 cents piece, so if you've already got those basics, there's some extra savings for you there. And speaking of potential savings, you might be able to save even more by buying this deck on TCG Player and utilizing heavily played and damaged cards, which of course, you know home too. That being said, do keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.